You know, one of these days I should make a more video to explain all this shit. Okay, apparently it hasn't been died again. Oh no! What is happening here? Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> the game crashed. But there's still fucking zombies. Tell them to stop fucking zombies. What if a zombie and a zombie had a baby? Would it be a zombie? No. That's actually a theory you want to test. Be afraid. Like, do you see what's happening? A uh, goopy, as we all know and love him, uh, <laughs> decided to take up the hobby of a train set. And it fucking killed him. <laughs> Man, I feel really bad for the kid. Dude had to be resurrected resurrect and see his kids die over and over and over for every generation forever. They're twins? Yeah. I just had twins. I'm having twins. You know, someday we'll finish this legacy. It all starts off with a very misunderstood teenager and his father, Goopy and Gary Gilsgarbo. It wasn't apparent at the time, but Goopy suffered from some very strange mental issues. The two lived out in the middle of bumfuck outskirts nowhere. Goopy, however, is actually leaving for college in just a few days. Goopy's hoping to live out his college years having fun and benefiting his life in the future. However, in the first two hours, he got himself landed in prison, for murdering several of his colleagues. He spent the better of two months fighting lawsuits he'll never win. With a lawyer, there was no way he could ever afford. Goopy loses the lawsuit and has to pay the families of those he suffered. He spends ten years in prison. He often dropped the soap on purpose training in yoga and aerobics. Until he's released a decade later, he relocates to Vayut City, a new man. After spending 10 years in prison, Goopy decides to live out his dating fantasies, mainly because he needs a shitload of money to pay off all those lawyer fees. Goopy likes to take a cold hard look at his life with his favorite cocktail, called the Vodka Velveeta, which is one part's vodka, and three parts cheese powder. But never mind that, take a look at the redhead that just walked into the bar. That is Michelle O'Sullivan, technically the matriarch of the entire story. But we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. For now, it's time to drink. After several vodka Velveetas and a fit of desperation, the two start making mad love in the middle of the bar, flaunting it all for everyone in the bar to see, including God. See, what isn't apparent to you yet is Michelle's also pretty desperate in finding love considering she only has about another 20 years to live. Goopy doesn't know that yet, and neither does she. <laughs> considering both parties are drunk on Velveeta sauce and liquor, the two choose to get married in front of the bar. They've known each other for about maybe like 45 minutes. <laughs> it's The Sims, don't, don't fucking question it. There's really nothing to question. After a few more vodka Velveetas, the two went back to Michelle's place and quickly got busy making sweet, passionate Sims love. Their honeymoon was merely minutes after meeting each other. After spooning for maybe about 15 minutes, the two decide to have a wedding in their backyard, inviting literally no one, because neither of them know anyone. They actually saved a lot of money on food and seating arrangements, because they needed neither. 
Without really realizing it, Goopy was starting a small family. It's 1995, he's cuddling with his wife. They're expecting a child. Turns out they actually have twins. Merida and Drizella O'Sullivan. Goopy didn't want to be a deadbeat like his father, living in a trailer. The couple quickly got to work raising their kids. Before you know it, they started aging up really quick. The kids were raised right, but still liked to have fun. It wasn't before long, though, Goopy started to develop a dad bod. Time flies when you're having fun, though. The twins are already adults, and Michelle's on her way out. Michelle actually passed away pretty early on into their relationship. Goopy really didn't know what hit him. Goopy quickly picked up a hobby of maintaining a small train set so that way he can cope with the loss of his wife. He also developed a pretty bad habit with shitposting online. It wasn't before long Goopy's problems started to come back. He had nowhere else to turn. His kids were soon leaving for college, leaving him in the house by himself. He had almost no friends other than Michelle. Poor guy. Wish there was something I could have done to help him. The only way Goopy saw fit to do it was with his train set. He doused it with gasoline, started up the engine, took the train around Vaya City, a recreation that he made with his kids. Within seconds, the entire study room was completely filled with flames. Goopy immediately regretted his decision. All of the years he wasted in prison rolled through his head. The twins managed to make it out of life, but the house was completely lost. Burnt in rubble along with their father's ashes. They never even saw the suicide note. Turns out having two dead parents gets you a lot of money to study with. Merida and Drizella are enrolled in Sim State University. Drizella is majoring in paranormal studies, while Merida is studying dramatic arts. Drizella liked to study, while Merida liked to party. Merida ended up hooking up with a girl named Joy St. Julian, while Drizella kept studying. The two quickly got to work on their relationship, but it wasn't before long, a very obnoxious llama mascot named Blair Cox, yes his last name is Cox, joined the crew and fell in love with Drizella. All four of the college students quickly got to work with being adults for the first time ever in their lives. Merida and Drizella were mourning the loss of their parents in a completely different way than anyone else ever would. Drizella kept on top of her studies while everybody else in the house pretty much just ran around naked playing video games. The quartet of college students liked to have their fair share of fun and went to plenty of parties on campus. However, it wasn't before long that they actually graduated, top of their studies. Blair dropped out, however, so did Joy. But Merida and Drizella both graduated top of their class. After graduating top of her class in paranormal studies, Drizella actually started working with the Grim Reaper. She was like his personal assistant or something? I don't know. But she called up a favor and resurrected her father. Not knowing that he committed suicide all along, she just thought he died as an accident. She brought him back to life. Gave him another chance. Goopy was really happy. They rebuilt the house, had it pimped out into a gigantic manor. Goopy was finally able to spend time with his kids as adults. However, as a side effect of Goopy being resurrected, he's actually immortal now. So for the next 43 years, he watched as his kids, grandkids, etc, etc, age up past him. Pretty much acting as the crazy grandpa that just sits on the couch watching his soaps, drinking beer, eating grilled cheese. He just was a background dude. Everybody else had their families to care for, their parties to have, all that. It was just like when he was in prison again. Goopy didn't know what to do. He just sat there wasting time. Until he decided, enough was enough, he wanted to have an adventure. Goopy went on a vacation, he decided to get away from it all. Goopy went out to go see it all. Tropical islands, crisp mountaintops, fucking China. Goopy went to China. He became a fucking ninja. He knows how to teleport now. Seriously. However, while he was on the tropical island, he actually met with the dude that he purposely dropped the soap for. The two quickly got back at it, realizing their love for each other, until...
Goopy was one of 12 survivors on this airplane crash. He was unconscious for several days until he washed up on shore. Here, Goopy is stranded on Felicity Island. He had nothing to eat, nothing to wear. He quickly got to work looking for any supplies he could gather, until he pissed off a tribe of monkeys. The monkeys actually stole everything out of Goopy's luggage. Goopy wanted fucking revenge. Goopy went and got fucking revenge. However, then Goopy noticed a rare artifact. At least he thought it was rare. I don't know. So then he beat the shit up a fucking monkey. However, the monkey kicked his ass. He ran away like a little bitch. Gave the monkey a banana. And now I guess they're friends. Goopy started talking to the artifact that he then named Spalding, who actually gave him a disease. Goopy sought out to find other survivors, but instead found this guy that claimed he was a doctor. Goopy also made friends with the local tribe, particularly this one girl named Kiri. However, their relationship pretty much went south whenever Goopy was caught making love with the tribe master's wife. There was a short change in leadership influenced by Goopy. Goopy actually became prince of this tribe, but he was still trying to find an exit off of the island. He started to search the island more and more and even became friends with a lot of the wildlife. He took part in a lot of rituals on the island. This one, he's drinking the blood of the previous leaders, and then also walking on their remains. However, it wasn't before long Goopy actually pissed off their god. But rescue came from Valiant City, and Goopy took Kiri with him. After six long years, Goopy was finally reunited with his family. All that time, he was actually just a couple miles away from home, just across the lake. When he was up in the helicopter, he just looked down and went, Hey, that's my house, and they just dropped them off. Nah, that doesn't really matter, though. The point is, is he's home, he has a new wife, all is fine. His first night home, however, Goopy could not sleep. He didn't know what was going on. Even though he was surrounded by loved ones, it probably had something to do with the fact that his family grew three times the size while he was gone. Goopy actually started to have a panic attack when he was in the bathroom. The room was shaking, he swore he was hearing music. He didn't know what was going on. He's never had it this bad before. This time he was actually hearing voices. He didn't know what they were saying, though. It was like they were in a language he didn't understand. However, there is one set of words he could have sworn he understand. He kept hearing it in his head, over and over again. He could have sworn it was saying... However, Goopy wasn't the only person to hear that voice. That voice echoed around the world, only being heard by specific people. Specific people in other lands, other dimensions. One of those candidates, however, happened to be a traitor in another dimension, named Helga. It's spelled H-E-L-G-U-H, and it comes into play later, so keep that in mind. It was almost like that voice caused the storm to get worse. The traitor, Helga, was the only survivor on the toppled over ship. Without knowing where she is, she started swimming to the near shore. She was struggling to stay alive in this heavy water. As she was swimming, she was wondering if she was going insane. I mean, after all, you just don't hear a voice like that and immediately crash a ship. I mean, maybe. That, that could be how Titanic happened, I don't know. She made it to the shore and took refuge under the upside-down boat. She started a small fire and just waited out the storm. After surviving the storm and living the sea morning, Helga realized she was in Skyrim, a different continent from which she's from and a completely different dimension from where we were just at. But don't let that confuse you, Helga's our other main protagonist. But whatever, it worked out. Helga was actually on that ship anyways to come to Skyrim, but she wanted to be on the other side of the continent. So here she is, now she has to walk. And boy, oh boy, what a walk it'll be. Anyways, back in our dimension at Valued City. A year has actually passed since Goopy had that mental breakdown. The current generation of the O'Sullivan family is actually expecting their next child. It was expected to be a girl. The mother to be Elizabeth O'Sullivan went into labor in the dining room that night. She was surrounded with all of our loved ones. Her husband, parents, 
grandparents, great grandparents, and even the butler. All watched as she gave birth to the newest girl in the household. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Helga O'Sullivan. Goopy was ecstatic to see his newest family member. However, something was wrong. Almost like the kid was causing it. The eldest members of the family were mysteriously dying in unnatural ways, and a fucking temple erected in the backyard, bringing with it a sacrifice. Goopy's wife called out for him as she was dying as well. This is the most amount of grief Goopy's ever had to withstand. At this point, Goopy has actually lost two wives and four kids. Goopy, overwhelmed with his grief, does what every sane human being would ever do. He grabs his AR-15 and kills the fucking butler. So at this point, the death toll in this household is about six right now, which is actually kind of a good record. Goopy then goes sets his sights on the baby, seeking revenge for his kids and wife. But along with all the other disasters going on right now, there's also a zombie outbreak, so now the butler came back to life and now makes Goopy a zombie. So now the death toll's up to seven, however, Goopy's immortal, so technically he's still there, but he's a living zombie now. He's held in captivity until Helga and her new sister, Olga, go off to college to find a cure for the zombie plague. The rest of the O'Sullivan family actually never tell Helga or Olga what happened that night. They're led to believe that Goopy's actually just patient zero, and their great-great-grandfather, so yeah. The two sisters take Goopy with them, keep him safe. The zombie infection actually has spread wide enough that most of society are just zombies now. College students, custodians, cafeteria employees, mascots, professors, pretty much this university's fucked. At the end of their first semester, the two sisters decide to have a college party inviting all the hippest of zombie college students. But let's be honest, a lot of them are probably just dropouts or stragglers that just want to go for the free booze or food. It isn't before long a fight breaks out in the front room. Olga watches terrified as Helga beats the shit out of a fucking zombie cheerleader. This goes on for quite a while with all the other party guests. Until... The one that they were sworn to protect. The one that caused them to be here in the first place, going back several generations. Hell, going back several centuries at this point. Goopy O'Sullivan was killed in the crossfire. Granted, you know, he is a zombie and everything, but, you know, they, they wanted to bring him back. He's, he's family, you know? Goopy watches as he lays his life for good this time. He sees the reflection of all of his past wives, his kids, his family to be. Anybody that he's made friends with, the dude that he fucked in prison and then on the island, all the people that he pissed off on the island, even that dude that claimed he was a doctor. He was actually just an assistant store manager of a shitty grocery store. Anyways, this was the end of Goopy O'Sullivan as we knew him. Psych, Goopy's immortal. He just kind of fell back down from heaven. And he's cured. That's how lore works. Continuing the fight, Helga shoots into a horde of zombies. Meanwhile, Olga and Goopy run for the nearest junker to escape it. Helga continues to shoot into the horde of zombies. Goopy and Olga make their escape when suddenly Goopy hears that familiar voice. Well, it's been fun. Helga was quite literally left for dead in this scenario. But Goopy and Olga made it out alive and that's all that she cared about. She may never see her family again, but she'll rest easy knowing they're safe. The two immediately hightailed it back to Valued City. However, we still kind of had a zombie problem with Helga. Not knowing what else to do, she ran for the nearest thing. Then she got in that thing without asking any questions, figuring she was about to die. However, that thing that she got into is what I call a plot device. Helga had escaped, but where'd she go? What's your name, my character? Helga. Just like that, Helga was sent off to a completely different universe, never to be seen by her family again. However, she was found by Helga, that traitor we saw from earlier. Do you get it now? This is how they're connected. I'm not crazy, I swear. Just, just fucking keep going.
Helga took Helga under her wing after she had found her in Helgen. The two quickly became two of the best mercenaries in all of Skyrim. From doing odd jobs and general labor in all of the major cities and holds, to hunting, researching, and exploring the wilderness beyond, the two quickly became inseparable companions for life. They started taking bounties from the local shopkeeps and innkeepers. Whether it was hustling or dungeon crawling, they were the two you would count on. Helga, spelled H-E-L-G-U-H, was actually a pretty talented spell sword. Helga Sullivan actually learned that she had power she never even knew she had. The two are truly set for adventure now as they're diving deep into a cave, looking for a relic for a shopkeep that may or may not be there anymore. They're prepared to kill whatever it takes to get them that fucking relic, because they need to make money badly. After a pretty kick-ass montage of receiving the relic, Helga Prime actually noticed there's some writing on the wall. After investigating, it seems it's some kind of ore that's absorbed into her. Afterwards, they head to White Run, talk to Yara Balgriff, and he assigns them to kill a fucking dragon. Of course they kill it with no problem, but then she gets absorbed with even more ore. She gets sent to the Throat of the World to talk to the Greybeards to see what it means. Upon talking to the Greybeards, it actually turns out that Helga Prime is actually what's called Dragonborn. Basically saying she's the chosen one set to save the world from dragons taking over Skyrim. The Greybeards now give them a new quest. A quest that will take them many moons, many years, many centuries, a very long fucking time. And it's gonna be hard. Hard enough that they decide they need to recruit more party members. Helga and Helga begin scouting for town around Skyrim, looking for only the finest in their crafts. The current standings is Helga, the Dragonborn Mage, Helga O'Sullivan, a fire mage that's from another dimension that's awfully popular in the world of Skyrim, Lydia, a house carl that's assigned to Helga for basically saving Whiterun. She's just kind of a backpack. Anebriot, a drunken paladin that basically just complains and drinks alcohol all the time. He's cool. I like him. And finally we have Inigo, who's a sneaky sneak Khajiit, but also kind of a bard. He's also cool, really soft-spoken. I like him a lot, and you should too. They're all informed of their current quest, and they set off for fucking adventure. However, let's 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 roll back the video for a second and go back to where we started. Here's Vyud City, present day. Everything you've seen so far leads up to this very moment. Goopy, after realizing his great 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 granddaughter Helga, who's been causing him grief ever since he was a child, saved his and her sister's life. And left herself for dead. He's tired of holding on. He's miserable. He's gone through so many generations of grief, he doesn't know what to do with himself, so he just goes. He leaves. He just started driving. Out of Vayut City. Passing through his old spots downtown. The setting of that fateful night. Past downtown, the cityscape. And then finally back to his hometown, at the outskirts of Vayut City. And that's finally when he makes it to his destination. His childhood home, where he started from.
It was as if the world revolved around Goopy. Everything made sense when he was the center of it. It was almost like time stopped when he wasn't there. However, time didn't only stop in Vayut City. Time basically stopped everywhere. The only person that still had any sense of anything was Helga. At first she thought she was just unconscious, or maybe just dreaming. But then she figured it out. She's stuck in a void like purgatory. Helga started running. She had no sense of measurement. There were no miles, there were no kilometers. It was just time. And she couldn't even keep track of that. There was no time anymore. She kept running until she came across something big, something massive. She found another world, another plane of reality. But she had been here before. She just figured this was the border world. Helga began to explore this new plane of existence, hoping to find some kinds of answers as to why time just shut down. She was surrounded with things she's never seen before. It was around this time she finally started to hear something after spending an eternity in silence. She listened to a voice that was very familiar. She didn't know if it was in her head or not. But it was indeed reality. And that's when she realized she was in the face of God. Helga quickly got to work trying to figure out how to get the god to notice her. She began seeing what her magic could do in this plane of existence. It was his fault everything froze. It was his fault everything stopped. She figured if she can't get the god to notice her, maybe the god's followers would notice her. She began injecting herself into another plane of existence, one that not even the god would notice. She was hoping at some point one of the god's followers would catch on. But it seems no one ever did. Drowning in her own outcries for help, she had no other options until she was presented with the answer. Helga had to take matters into her own hands. It feels as if that was the answer... ...to everything. As if everything after that moment finally made sense... ...to her and all of those around her. Hopefully even to the god himself, and his followers. Everyone felt free of past obligations and burdens. Everyone felt free from their pasts, but also their futures. Without being able to see it, Helga felt as if everything around her was unfreezing, coming back to reality. While at the same time, everything felt like it was leaving reality, everything felt weird. Maybe it won't make sense now, but maybe it'll make sense someday. You know, even if it never does make sense...
We'll always have the memories of it. The good ones. And the bad ones. But hey, the important thing is... that I actually finished the board video. 